All right, greetings, uh, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. Um, I'm concerned. I'm concerned because, um, you know, I read the comments and, and I see some of the, uh, I guess you could say, <clears throat> ideology, theology, or philosophy. They mean if you have accepted um, in the perspective religions that you may be ascribing to or come from. But what I want to do is I want to come here because of, of the concern, because I am, after all, a pastor, according to Jeremiah 3.15. And I'll quote it. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Um, the nature of this particular message right here is sinner. I want to give you a good understanding, coming from the biblical perspective, not my personal opinion, or any church backing personal opinion, or any other philosophies and theologies that you may have believed yourself. Uh, over the years come to, um, if I can use this term, religion. I want to stick with the King James Version of the Bible for clarity because that's what most people are familiar with um, because I, I think that the nature of this message is, is really important to get across to you, the people. Um, and, and I want you to check me out. I want you to check out everything that I say. I want you to get your Bibles and go along and if I go too fast, stop the video and go back and view it again. But I think it's very important uh, in this late hour that we're living in, knowing that the king is soon to come, um, that we all have a good understanding of, of sin and a sinner or the sinner man. Now, if you've been listening to my videos any particular time or any amount of time whatsoever at all, you know um, that, that I am just vehemently and totally against organized religion. Um, as a matter of fact, I can't stand it. It's a stench in my nostrils as well as a stench in the most highs. Um, and I'm after the center man. I'm, I'm, I'm up front here to tell you flat out straight up what my intent is. And what my purpose is, I'm after the center man. I'm not after um, people who already hold or religious people who, have no, who, who don't know that they're sick and they don't have any need for a physician. You're fine. You'll stay right there where you are and, and keep doing what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to see. Because see, if I tell you you're fine, you're going to believe you're fine. But the truth is, I don't believe you're fine, but that's what you want to hear. Um, but I, this message right here is, is going to be intrusive. It's going to be uh, very provocative. Um, it's going to be soul searching. And that's what it's meant for. That's what the intent is for. Because I don't want you to be deceived um, by any man. And I want you to check it out. But also have enough sense to know that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And they cannot hear unless... They are a preacher that has been sent by the Most High Himself. Um, and so I'm here to give clarity and to bring clarity and understanding. And I'm sure that I'm going to destroy a lot of sacred cows, um, a lot of traditions of men. I mean, after all, Christ did that. And, and um, But, I, you know, to do the word and to bring truth. Um, because the Bible says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Um, that is my intent and that's my purpose. Is to bring you the truth. Um, so, people are sick and tired of being, you know, jacked around by organized religion, uh, and we need somebody to talk to us real up front. We want straight talk. We don't want riddles and terms, and and uh, we don't want nobody stage playing with our soul because some of us, even few as it may be, but some of us put a very high price up on our soul, and that's the reason why I'm here. This is the reason why I'm here today. So I'm gonna start off uh, in First John the first chapter, the seventh verse. And it says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So the understanding here is that the blood that was shed, um, it cleanses us from all sins. But yet and still, there are conditions that must be met in order to have the forgiveness of that sins, or those sins. Uh, verse 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now, the reason why I'm here is because I, I, I keep continually seeing I, I, I'm, a, I'm a saved sinner. Uh, I'm just a sinner. And then they profess that they are Christ or they are Israel, but they profess that they are Christ and they are of Israel, but they're a saved sinner or they're just a sinner. Now, to say that you're a sinner or a saved sinner, that, that's implying that you're still living in the condition of sin. And so we need clarity. We need knowledge. We need understanding right here today. And that's what I'm going to give it to you, hopefully, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it says, if we confess our sins. Now, listen, we're coming from the position, and I'm talking to people 
who already have made the profession that you are an Israelite or you are walking in the newness of life or you have already acknowledged your iniquities and your transgressions and your sins that you've turned from. But yet if you say you've done that and you're still living in sin or you're practicing sin, there's some serious problems and you need to know that. And that's the reason why I'm here today. It says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Did you hear that? So the, the idea is, is once we confess our sins, he's faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins. And those sins are the sins that we have committed in the past. And let me go to the 10th verse. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, one of the saddest ways that people make him a liar is just by simply not confessing their sins or known sins. Now, confessing is more just giving mental sin or acknowledging what you have done. The, the whole ideal of confessing the sin is, is acknowledging your iniquity, acknowledging transgressions, and then turning from that never to go back and pick it up again. Turn from that wicked way. Begin to develop a godly antipathy against that wickedness and that sin. And you begin to hate it and you abhor it. And you begin to walk in the newness of life. So a lot of people attend churches um, or they attend church because it's something to do. Or it's a way that they've been raised. When a man or woman lives in sin, they are saying that the Most High is a liar. Did you hear what I said? If you live in sin, you are actually saying that he's a liar. Because we just read before, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. We should not be living in sin. Alright? Hear me out for a second. Alright? Now, we have all sinned. All of us. Every single one of us. And come short of the glory of of the most high. We all have. Alright. Um, so in order to not make him a liar. We must confess. Of our iniquity. Our transgression. Our wrongdoing. And then turn. From that way. And then walk in the newness of life. Now 1 John 2 and 1 says. My little children. These things write unto you. That ye sin not. Did you understand that? He's talking to the children. And he says. I'm writing these things to you. That you sin not. Not to turn around and say. That you're a saved sinner. No, you don't practice sin. That he's writing these for the purpose that you do not sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. In other words, there's a provision for those of us who have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. There's a provision there that you know, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. In other words, he will mediate for us to the Father, providing that we meet the conditions and we confess what we have done, our transgression, our iniquity, or our lawlessness, that we've done not practicing or living in it and expecting to go into his holy kingdom. Uh, 1 John 3, 4, Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. That's why you have religions out here, philosophies out here, that tries to desensitize your mind over and over again and deceive your mind to tell you that we're not under that law. We don't have to obey that law because they are tools of the enemy, tools of the Hasatan, Satan, to actually get you to be deceived, tricked, hoodwink, um, bamboozle you into iniquity and sin because uh, the, the Satan himself knows that, that the one who made the laws, the statutes and commandments is a righteous judge. So if he can deceive you by philosophy, tradition, religion, or any ideology or theology and get you to believe that you can continue in sin and live in sin uh, and think that you only have to confess one time and you're going to be saved, um, you're going to have a rude awakening when this breath goes out of your body. And, and the Bible says this, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil. Did you hear that? So you cannot be a saved sinner. You, he didn't come to save you in your sins. He come to save you from your sins. The scripture says, Whosoever committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
So when you had conversion and stuff, it's because you had conviction that you are a transgressor. You are walking in lawlessness. You are walking in direct disobedience to the Most High. And then that's when you got convicted and then you acknowledge your sins, your iniquities and your transgression before Him. And you turn from your wicked ways and you no longer practice those past sins. That's the ideal of forgiveness of sins. 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God, and of course a lot of people use the term we're born again, or we're filled with his Ruach Kadesh, or the Holy Spirit. Um, but the scripture says, whosoever is born of God, do not commit sin. Did you hear that? I did not say, neither did the scripture say, the scripture did not say that you are never going to sin. It says that you do not sin. In other words, you do not practice sin. Did you hear that? For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, to understand that particular passage of scripture right there, we have to understand why the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans in the seventh chapter um, what, what is being said right here. Because see, the early disciples of Christ had an understanding of what was going on in the spiritual war that we're involved in. You have to know the difference between the new man and the old man. Because when you know the difference between a new man and the old man, then you'll understand the war that we are engaged in. Romans 7 verse 14 says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am cardinal, sold under sin. That means, you know, you are sold under sin. You were born in sin. Um, or you were born in sin. Shapen. In iniquity. Every single one of us was. And we were sold under sin. That's all we could do. We had, we had no recourse. We couldn't do nothing else. We had no options to live any other way. Because we were just flat out sinners. Unregenerated. Did not have the nature of the most high. And he says in Romans 7 verse 15. For that which I do I allow not. You hear that? In other words, he has a personal disagreement about this war that's waging in him, the things that he do. He says, I don't want to do it for what I would that I do not. In other words, I want to, for instance. How many of you would love to have more time in, in personal personal prayer and study to the most high? But every time you turn around, it seems like there's some excuse. Uh, by the time your feet hit the floor, there's something going on in your life to take away all your time and effort though, away from personal private study or dedication um, and your private prayer time to the most high. Huh? That's the things you want to do. You want to study. You want to be more righteous. You, you want to spend time. You want to grow in grace. You want to grow in knowledge. But it seems like it's always something coming up, whether it's your own flesh or some external uh, things that are distracting us constantly. Huh? He says, but what I hate, that I do. How many times you 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 are, um, have confessed of a particular sin over and over and over again, but yet you acknowledge that it's sin. You're sick and tired of it. You're bound by it. You don't want to do it. You want to be free from it. You actually hate it, but then you find yourself doing it. You find yourself bound. You find yourself snared, and you seem like that no matter how hard you try, you just cannot seem to get free. You cannot, you don't have a, a way to get out. So Paul said this in, the, in Romans 7 verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, you hear that? In other words, if I do that which I would not, now my body is doing, but I don't want to. You hear that? I consent unto the law that it is good because that's what a transformation takes place at. Right here in the mind. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, your mind is already fighting against this. huh? But, but he's, he's, he's got some understanding for us here. Listen. He says, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Where is that sin at? He said, sin that dwelleth in me. And see, as long as you're in institutions or in churches or assemblies out there that refuse to give you understanding of how to get free from sin that is dwelling on the inside of you, all right, you're going to continue to stay bound. You're going to continue to, to deal with guilt, shame, and condemnation because you don't understand the war that is taking place. You don't understand what's going on. Paul understands it clearly, and he's trying to speak to us. He's echoing. His words is echoing us. From 2,000 years ago, he's trying his best to write it down in a letter to give us understanding that you have to understand that there's two natures, a dual nature within you. A nature that is good, a nature that is just, holy, true, and right, 
after you've been converted, and then there's a sinful nature or that evil that is constantly present with you that must be put to death continually. That's why he said, I die daily. So he acknowledged that it's no longer I. In other words, I'm in disagreement with this. I don't want to do this, but it is sin that dwells in me. Verse 18 of Romans, the seventh chapter. For I know that it in me, that is in my flesh. You hear what he said? He didn't say in his spirit. He said in his flesh. And that's another thing that people don't understand about soul salvation. That's another thing that people don't understand. You see, because you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Are you following me? So basically, you are a being that has a spirit, soul, and body that's working in you while yet you are just one. Do you understand that? Huh? So Paul knew what was the, what was going on, the difference between the spirit, the soul, and the body, man. He knew that. And his flesh consisted of the body or the old sinful nature that he was wrestling and warring with. And you know just what I do that Paul was converted because the book of Acts teaches us clearly that Paul was converted. And so if you've been converted, many of you, but yet you're still wrestling continually with no provisions of freedom. Wonder how in the world can I get free? And even though you've been converted, some of you are still worrying about the damnation of eternal lake of fire. The damnation of the eternal lake of fire because you're still sinning and you're secretly doing it, but you're scared to talk to somebody about it because if you do, the way that the church is now, full of gossipers and slanders and talebears, you feel that you might be thrown under the bus and nobody understands that, that, you, that, that there's something going on you don't want to do, but you're bound, you find yourself doing it because now you get all these religions out there oh you can fast it out oh you can starve it out and no you can't you cannot fast the spirit out you can't starve a spirit out that's why it's called war it's a spiritual warfare do you understand that you understand that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and power this is spiritual well let's anyway let me go on because i don't want to get off course i want to try my best to stay this course right here right now he said, For I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwell of no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. He said, There's a will in me that wants to do good, but I, 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 I can't find it. And he says, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Paul said, I want to do good, but it seems like every time I turn around, I'm doing this evil. And I don't want to do the evil. I want to do the good. I don't want to do the evil, but I want to do the good. And that's the reason why many of you are, are deceived today in the thinking that you are a saved sinner. And that's why you talk like that. See, if you believe wrong, you act wrong. And if you, if you talk wrong, you're going to believe wrong. That's why you need sound doctrine so you can have understanding. Let's get some understanding. Let's go on here for a second. Hmm? Romans chapter 7 verse 20. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I, you hear that, that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He's reiterating it again from verse 17. Where's the sin? It is in the body, not in the spirit man, not in the soul man, not in that regenerated man. He made a distinction and a separation between the two. All right? But you still cannot let sin reign in your mortal body. In other words, something must be done about it. Huh? For I find, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil was present with me. And then he says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He's talking about the Holy Spirit filled man, the, the regenerated man. See, so after conversion, make no mistake about it, if you are truly a child of the king, your conversation will be just like the conversion of the early assembly that we read about in the book of Acts. Uh, 1 John 5, 16 through 21. If any man see a brother in, if any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. And there is a sin um, unto death. I do not say that he should pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. And we know uh, that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Do you hear that? If you lay claim to being born again, then you don't sin. If your birth again, if your spirit is renewed, then guess what? It clearly tells you right here, you sin not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself that the wicked one toucheth him not. Yeah, you're supposed to keep yourself and you should do that. 
Um, and we know that we are of God and the whole world life in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and he have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. And those crosses you wear around your necks, they're idols. You have posted up in your churches, they're idols. Um, he told us clearly, don't make um, idols of wood, hay, and stone. You got uh, idols of all in your homes and everything. And because of the culture that we're surrounded, we're surrounded by a Greco-Roman, Greek, European culture that is inundated and influenced with idolatry. And these churches that some of you go to, it has nothing but idols all over the place and stuff. And so when you, you know, when you become desensitized to the Most High if you don't know the Word, and you just think it's an accepted form of worship, but it's idolatry. Now, sin not, in Psalms 4, 4, it says, stand in awe. And sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Salah. Psalms 32 verse 1. Um, Blessed is he who transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalms 32 verse 5. This is what David said. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. You see, that's the problem with many of us today is that we really truly have not acknowledged our sin. That's why we haven't been free from it. Huh? And my iniquity, have I not hid? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, that thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. 